Hello everybody, it's Terry and Renee, oh. and uh, we're in a meeting, a conference in uh, New Jersey right now, having come from uh, Portland, Oregon, and from Iowa, and <laughs> California with Nancy the Frames camp meeting, that's and that's what we're making the video for. The meeting there in Nancy's uh, went a long time. Yeah, I've been known to preach a long time. <laughs> and uh, it was so good, I think they told me it's had 12,000 views already, so they wanted to put it on our YouTube that's program. Right. That's right. So instead of the normal uh, uh, sitting at a table and teaching, I think we're on spiritual it's authority. A I think we're on spiritual authority number 18. Uh, <laughs> but uh, they wanted to break that up maybe in four sessions, four uh, shows or programs. So uh, I want to just do an introduction for it and tell you it's on uh, it's on a number of topics. I'm talking about what, how to make right. heaven move right. and uh, just some different things that I did for ministers. There's like 100 ministers there. So anyway, you'll enjoy it this week right. and, and uh, next, it. and I don't know if Matt's going to do it three or four weeks or what he's going to do, but uh, you'll enjoy it. We just want to drop in here real quickly before I go preach and uh, tell you that it's going to be really good. We invite you to watch our YouTube program. Terry Mize Ministries coming out every Thursday. So we love you. God bless you. And you are more than conquerors. So all of heaven is watching the earth all the time looking for a man or a woman that's going to use the Word of God, that's going to speak the Word of God, that's going to move on the Word of God. And when they do, heaven moves. so sure God didn't show me something because I said you know I could have done a lot better job for God in the jungle if I hadn't been so sick I said there's days I needed to go preach to those those tribal people and I just couldn't do it in fact one day I was so weak and I said I've got to go preach to these I've got to help these people and I we had a horse there so I went over and you know, got the horse and got the saddle and just barely got the saddle up on his man. I'm a Texan, man. I've, I've saddled horses. I mean, you know, and here I'm just uh, trying to get this set. And just pulling the scent strap tied, the girth strap, uh, I passed out. I've never fainted or passed out in my life before or since. But just putting that exertion, that strength, and just pulling that, just, I just passed out. And when I woke up, I'm laying flat on the ground. The horse is looking at me like this, you know. <laughs> So I got up and pulled the saddle off of him and I clawed back up in the house and in the hut and went back to my hammock. And I just said, I, I could have helped more people if I hadn't been so sick. I said, and I could have helped more people if I'd had some money. You know, when I went back into Panama City to get supplies, if I could have bought some supplies, that would have been nice. And I said, I, I'm... I said, it doesn't make sense to me that God would kill his missionaries. I said, that's lousy military strategy. I said, no general kills his troops. And I said, God can't hardly get anybody to go to the mission fields. And when finally somebody says, I'll go, then he kills them. And I said, I just somehow didn't see, that's just... I said, I think God said something to me. And I said, uh, I said, I'm only going to be here two weeks, as you know, and go back. And I said, but I said, if something doesn't change, I said, my missionary career isn't going to be very long. And I said, that's fine. I said, if God wants me to die for Jesus, I'm happy to do that. He died for me. I can die for him. If that's it, that's what he wants. Hey, that, that's not a big deal. I said, in fact, they don't even need to ship my body back from the jungle. Just bury me in the jungle and go on with it. I, that's not a problem with me. You know, he, I, I said, it just doesn't make sense. Right. What good would it do? Right. Who would it help? And I said, uh, so she said, what are you going to do? And I said, I'm going to lock myself in a room tomorrow. And I said, I'm not coming out until I hear from God. And I said, I, I said, you know, if I don't hear from God in two weeks, then I'll come out of the room and go back to, <laughs> go back to the jungle and either live or die for God, whatever. I said, but I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go hear something. And I said, I'm not coming out until I hear. 
or until it's time to catch an airplane. Yeah. And so uh, I, went to, I went to the room and locked myself up. And uh, I, said, I said, Lord, you're going to have to talk to me. And it's as if Nancy, like he said, and not too nice a tone of voice either. He said, I've been waiting for you to ask. And I said, well, I, I, th I think you talked to me. I, I, I think you told me something. The church tells me you did not. I, I need to get this settled. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. and I told Jackie, I said, whatever I hear from God, when I come out of there, that's how we're going to live. If you marry me, that's how we're going to live. Yeah. And, uh, and so uh, he said, uh, turn to Romans 12 too. Well, I, you know, I, I knew what that said. I just quoted it to him, you know. Don't be, re don't be conformed to this world. Be, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Blah, 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 blah. blah. And he said, I said, turn there. I said, yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I, I turned there and I read it to him out loud. And I said, see, it says just what I told you it says. I said, what's your point? And he said, my point is you need to change your thinking. I said, there's nothing wrong with my thinking. He said, oh, yes, you have stinking thinking. First time I'd ever heard that phrase. A lot of preachers have written books about it and tapes about it since then, but uh, you've got stinking thing. I said, I do not have stinking thinking. I said, that says, don't be conformed to the world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. I said, I don't think like the world. I got saved when I was six. I've been filled with the Holy Ghost forever. I've never lived out in the world, lived in sin. I, I don't think like that. I think like the church. <laughs> Which, which was true. And the Lord said, that's exactly right. You think like the church and the church has stinking thinking and you need to change your thinking and start thinking like me. And that was one of those epiphany moments where the instant he said it, I didn't have to think about it. I just knew this is truth. This is truth. Amen. And I tell you what, he gave me five scriptures that now you all know them frontwards, backwards, and sideways. Back in 1966, the church didn't seem to know those scriptures, but, but, but now they're the, they're the crux and the foundation of the word of faith message. But he gave me Romans 12 too. Then he, then he said, turn over to Joshua 1. And he said, he said, I told Joshua to do three things and that if he'd do those three things, he'd be prosperous and he'd be successful. Yeah. He said, and if you'll do those three things, you'll be prosperous and successful. And anybody else will do those three things. They'll be prosperous and successful. That's right. yes, sir. So I turned over there and, and I said, you said three things. What are those three things? I went over there and it was talk like God, think like God, act like God. Ah. Isn't that right? That's right? He said to Joshua, let not this book of the law to bark out of your mouth or talk like God. Thank you for watching today. Renee and I always enjoy ministering to you. And one thing about the word, it works. You know, the COVID thing is about wrapped up, thank God. And uh, different restrictions are lifting around the world. And so uh, we're beginning to move out around the world again, which is what we've done for 54 years. And so uh, we want to invite you to partner with us, to hook up with us, to go around the world with us. You know, in our as far as teaching and training, we train missionaries. Uh, we train pastors. Uh, I've had pastors conferences in country after country after country, which is something God spoke to me to do when I was just a teenager to train ministers and so we've done that but we also have open air crusades and different kind of crusades in different nations uh, with healings and miracles and salvations so we want to invite you to be partners with us as we have partnered with other ministries all really all of our lives and we pray for our partners daily we'll pray for you daily so make it a consideration make it a prayer see what the Holy Ghost says to you and uh, we'd be glad to have you partner with us and go around the world with us God bless you. And thou shalt meditate therein. Yeah. How long? Day and night. Day and night. Amen. And what did God really mean by day and night? What he, what he really meant was day and night. Yeah. <laughs> or think like God. He said, and then that thou may observe us to do, to be a doer, to do. According to A.W. the longest word in the Bible, all that's written therein, and then thou shalt have, thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and thou shalt have good success.
And I had never heard anybody in my church in all my growing up years talk about successfulness and prosperity. Yeah. Not for Christians. Right. And I literally said to the Lord, I said, Father, seriously, <laughs> can it really be that easy? Can it really be that easy? And the Lord said, I, I said, can it really be that simple? That's what I said. He said, he said, simple, yes. Easy, no. Yes, that's right. Amen. He said, it's just that simple. Yes. But he said, it's not that easy because you're going to have to change your thinking. Right. And you're going to have to change your talking. Yes. Right. Then he led me to Jeremiah 1, 12. I watch over my word. I hasten my word to perform it. All of heaven's watching the word all the time. All of heaven's watching all the time to see what you're going to say. To see if somebody, some man, some woman, some boy, some girl, somewhere on the earth is going to say something in line with the word or do something based on the word. So they know what they're supposed to do. See, heaven doesn't know what it's supposed to do. You, you know you've got angels, right? right. Yes, 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 yes. 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 Just because you grew up doesn't mean you don't still have angels. Right. But I've always said this for decades and decades. I've said, you know, angels are, angels are underworked and overpaid. <laughs> because they're assigned to you. <laughs> but they're watching you and listening to you 24-7. Right. So they know what they're supposed to do. That's right. yeah. That's right. To see if you say something intelligent meaning based on the word of God because right. all that other stuff you say they don't care about right. yeah. 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 Amen. and watching you to see if you're going to do something based on the word then they know what they're supposed to do Amen. but most angels are just <laughs> laying on a lamppost chewing on a toothpick waiting for you to say something <laughs> you know one angel looks at another and says my guy hadn't said anything today is yours <laughs> No, it's been 16 weeks since my guy said anything in line with the word. Heaven doesn't know what they're supposed to do until you say something. Renee and I have our own YouTube channel. Some of y'all may watch that. Some of you have told me you do and put out a new one every, every Thursday. And, and uh, embarrassingly enough, yesterday I, I was watching it. It comes out every Thursday, so I was watching it yesterday. Embarrassingly enough, we're on, we're on week 16, 15 of spiritual authority. We've been talking about spiritual authority for 15 weeks. And, and you know, the church just hadn't scratched the surface right. yeah. Yeah. That's right. of spiritual yeah. authority. Yeah. We're, we're, we're supposed to be running this place. Amen. God said in Genesis 126, after he'd created everything else, then he got through with all the birds and the flowers and the trees and the oceans and the stars and the moon, all that stuff. Then he said, now, let us make man. Man, men and women, mankind. Let us make man in our likeness and in our image. And let them, them men and women, let them have dominion. Now we use the word today, faith and authority and power, but he used a stronger word. He said dominion. He said, I want my bunch to dominate the place. I want them to be the dominating factor. And then he gave us categories. He said, I mean over the fowl of the air, the fish of the sea, the beasts of the field, and over all the earth. That means tornadoes and hurricanes and wildfires and tsunamis and earthquakes and, right? <laughs> dominion, 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 dominate. And somewhere along the church has gone to sleep with that and forgotten that we're not the little mealy mouth sissified church. But we're the dominating factor on the planet. You know, I hear all these different people, politicians and everybody else today, you know, movie stars and everybody saying, saying, we've got to save the planet. Well, who do you think you are? You can't save the planet. You know, there are some fools think they can save the planet. And other fools think they can destroy it. Man can't destroy it and he can't save it because it belongs to God. The earth is the Lord's in the fullness thereof and all that dwell therein. Amen. And, and, and contrary to popular belief, uh, he is going to destroy it one of these days. 
Oh, he is going to destroy it. But we're to be the dominating factor. Amen. I mean, dominate. Dominate. Yes, sir. But we're going to have to do that by speaking the word, saying the word, declaring the word, right. acting on the word. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I love that. I love it where he says, let us make man our likeness, our image. You know, every, every time we had a, a baby and every time we had a grandbaby, I was there and I'd pick that little old sweet thing up and look at it. And then I've delivered a few babies that I didn't want to. First time I was 18 years old in the jungles of Panama, I didn't know where babies came from, but I delivered one. <laughs> hey, I'm talking 1968, man. Now I know your kids can watch TV today. They can watch the whole thing. They can watch the whole birth. <laughs> Back then we watched Lucy and Desi and Leave it to Beaver. And, and those folks slept in pajamas in twin beds. And, and I watched Westerns. Yeah. And so when they came and told me, hey, this girl's 13-year-old girl down here, wife number five of this guy, uh, is having a baby. I said, congratulations. They said, no, 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 you got to come. I said, I don't got to come. They said, no, you're the missionary. You got to come help. I said, no, I don't. <laughs> and they said, you have to come. You're the missionary. So I got up and went down there and didn't have a clue what was going on. I go down there into, her, into their hut and the husband's butchering a pig five feet away from where she's having a baby. And, uh, and she's squatting down on her, on her knees with her feet under her. And I said, uh, I don't think that's right. <laughs> I said, I, said I, I think you're supposed to lay down. <laughs> and she went, and I said, okay, okay, never mind. Never mind. And they came to me and they said, uh, what do you want us to do? Well, hey, I know the answer to that. I watch Gunsmoke. I watch Ponderosa. I watch John Wayne. I said the same thing every Western doctor ever said on TV. Boil water. That's exactly what I said. I said, boil water. I thought, what's the matter with you people? They came back in a little bit, brought me this big tub of smoking water. I mean, boiling water. They said, what do we do with this? I said, I don't have a clue. <laughs> Somehow I knew I was going to have to cut something. So I took my hunting knife that I'd been skinning monkeys with and, and threw it in the, the boiling water. And I found some string because I knew some, I don't know how I knew this. Somehow I knew I was supposed to tie something up. And so I, I threw the string in there. And then when it got cool enough, I washed my hands. But it was hot for a long time. I, you know. <laughs> Delivered this little baby girl. Cut the cord, tied it off, cut the cord. And uh, the dad wouldn't name it. He's mad because she's a girl. Yeah. And so I asked him, well, what's, what's the baby's name? He said, I went back the next day. He, I said, what's the baby's name? I went for five days in a row. What's the baby's name? He said, he didn't care. He's mad. Mad at her. And I said, if you don't name this baby when I get here tomorrow, I'm going to name her myself. He said, fine. I came back the next day. I said, what's the baby's name? He said, you name her. I said, all right, her name's Deborah after Deborah in the Bible. So he said, all right, fine. Her name's Deborah. But you know, I, I've had to do some missionary stuff like that. And uh, every time I had one of those little babies in my hands, mine or my, my kids, my grandkids or the other babies I've delivered here and there, uh, I've looked at them and I said, thank God. They're made in God's likeness and God's image. Because I've seen some ugly gods around the world. <laughs> Now, I go, to, I go to India a lot and have for, for decades and decades. And they, they got, the, the Hindus have 330 million gods. I know it goes right over your head as an American. We don't think like that. 330 million gods. And the best god they got is a guy named Ram. 
And Ram has an elephant's head, and he's got lots of arms and hands everywhere. And I've always said, thank God he doesn't look like Ram. <laughs> God made us in his likeness, in, in his image. You know, I've gone to those Hindu temples, and there are these gods like that, and, and sometimes I'll have an arm broken off. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe two. Right. And it'll be laying over there in the corner. <laughs> and I've gone into the priest and said, excuse me, uh, who, who, who builds your gods? Well, our, our, our priests build our gods. I said, well, that's interesting. I said, in Christianity, our God builds our priest. <laughs> and I said, I, I see your guy here is missing a couple of arms. I see him over there in the corner. <laughs> who, uh, who repairs your gods when they get broke? <laughs> Well, our, our priests repair our gods when they get broke. I said, well, that's interesting. In Christianity, our God repairs our priests when they get broke. You know? but, but God said, I made us in, in, he made us in his image, his likeness. And he said, and I want them to be the dominating factor. Amen. Amen. Christians are living so far beneath their privileges, so far beneath their dignity. We're the, we're the people of God called by his name. Isn't that right? I guess I ought to quit circling this airport and preach on something. I didn't ask you what the time limit was, Nancy. The, lo the, the longest I've ever preached in one service is 10 and a half hours. Wow. Um, <laughs> I don't, I don't feel that particular anointing today, but <laughs> neither, neither did I then. <laughs> Boy, you'd like it. You'd like it if God did it. Nobody wants to go to church and hear some guy stand up here for a long time flopping his jaws. Come on. But if the Holy Ghost is doing something, yeah. boy, we'll just, we'll just stay forever. Yeah. We were talking about that last night. Brother Hagin used to always say this. He'd say, he'd say, the miracles happen and the Holy Spirit shows up when the unbelieving believers leave. He said, like on Sunday night when the service is going and, and then it gets, you know, time to end and the unbelieving believers go home and the, the believing believers stay. He said, that's when the miracles happen. That's when the Holy Spirit shows up. And you know, back in those days, we made fun of the Baptist, Methodist, Presbyterian, all those folks because we said Sunday morning, said, man, man, they're fighting each other to get to the restaurant by 12. But by the time we get there at 2, 2.30 or so, well, the restaurant will be cleared out and we can just go in and eat. Yeah. But now we try to beat them. Yeah, come on. Yeah. And the church has fallen a long way. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. The church has fallen a long, long way. I believe the day's coming, Pastor Nancy, when, the, when the, the sheep, the congregation, comes to the shepherd, to the pastor. Not the other way around. I believe it's going to be the sheep come to the pastor and say, Pastor, <laughs> we need more church. This isn't working. <laughs> this one hour a week business is not working. We ought to be able to look around and say, this isn't working. That's right. That's right. Well, see, it used to work, but that's when we went to church and made it a priority. You know, I, I thank Chantel this morning and I thank Morgan this morning. So I've just enjoyed, I, I appreciate you ladies getting those kids to church all week. These little kids come in here looking like they just stepped out of a catalog, you know, out of a band box, you know, and in church and, uh, I, I just appreciate that. I just, I just honor that. Yeah. Raise those kids right. Yeah. And boy, Jackie used to walk in these meetings, our four little kids, you know, and they just looked so perfect and she looked perfect and everything. And people would come to me and they'd say, boy, your kids always just look so, so like they just stepped out of a catalog. Here we are missionaries, you know. And, and, and I'd say, yeah, but you ought to see the hotel room before we left. <laughs> 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 it, it, look, it looks like it blew up, you know. But I, 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 I honor you mothers that do that. I honor. Jackie used to say to me, she said, Terry, I feel like I just get up, get me ready, 
get four kids ready and go to church just to beat kids. She said, I just get to church. I got to take this one out. And I get that one back in here and I got to take the other one out. I get that one back in here. I got to take the other one out. I used to. I used to teach my kids, that I said, now, because mom and I are on the platform, I said, you guys sit on the front row. And we didn't send them to children's church or that kind of thing. We, we wanted them in the big service. And so uh, I said, now, you, you sit on the front row. And I said, because we're not with you, because we're on the platform. I said, we can't correct you. So you watch us. And I said, if I ever snap my fingers, then, then, then you're in trouble. I said, the first one's a warning. I said, if I ever do it twice... Now you're in trouble. And, and sometimes, sometimes I would, I would just get excited preaching and snap my fingers. Boy, those, those kids would. They, they, they'd say, who did it? Who did something? What'd you do? I didn't do anything. Renee and I just want to remind you that the greatest miracle of all time and the only eternal miracle is salvation. So uh, let's just do that right now. Pray this prayer after me. Father God. I come before you today to accept Jesus. I believe in my heart Jesus is the Son of God. I call on you today according to your word. I ask you to forgive me of my sins. Wash me in your blood. Make me a new creature. Thank you, Lord, for saving me, and I'll serve you the rest of my days in Jesus' name. If you prayed that prayer, the Bible says you're saved. You're born again. So write us, let us know, tell somebody that you prayed with Terry and Renee and that you gave your heart to Jesus. We love you. God bless you. Over 20 years ago, Terry and Jackie Mize began the Jackie Mize International Children's Foundation. We say JMICF. And we wanted to talk to you today and invite you to join and work with us in a worldwide effort to minister, help, and deliver really children from around the world. We work with orphanages, even human trafficking centers. We work to help widows and displaced women. And we are working daily, uh, more than ever before, <laughs> because of there's so many great needs around the world to work with orphanages and to help children that are really in desperate, dire need. I found two verses in the Bible, Proverbs 24, 11, that says, deliver those who are drawn away to death and those who totter to the slaughter, hold them back from their doom. And then in Proverbs 31, it says that we have got to speak up for those who don't have anyone to speak up for them. You know, JMICF wants to do this all year long. So we invite you to help us. And then also TMM, we take care of all the administrative costs also for JMICF as well as Terry uh, in his traveling ministry. So we are so grateful for anyone that can help us reach the world through JMICF. God bless you and thank you again.